Earlier this week, we finally got an update from Double Eleven on the progress of a patch 1.04, as well as confirmation of just what we can expect to see in it. Today, we are going to go through all of the details of what you can expect to see in update 1.04 for Rust on console, as well as giving you my thoughts on what I think about the development of the game so far. If you've already seen the patch notes and just want to hear me moaning about them, then I'll put the timestamps in the description so you can skip on to the part of the video that interests you. Welcome everybody, my name's Ben, we are The Beard Guys and welcome to our channel. If you've not watched any of our videos before, we have a bunch of Rust console tips and guides up already on YouTube, so if you're looking for some help, go and check those out. And we also have some good old fashioned Rust PvP stuff up as well, so if that's your cup of tea, then go and have a look. Today's focus is the announcement of the contents of the update 1.04 patch for Rust on console. The devs have updated their status website, which I'll put a link to down below with all of the details of what is in 1.04, as well as saying that it is currently in internal testing. What this second part means is that 1.04 needs to be signed off by QA still at double 11, and it will then move to platform certification with Sony and Microsoft. Realistically, given how long CERT has taken before for this game, I would be surprised if they got this update onto the live servers before the end of next week, but that is just a guess, so please don't take that as fact. Previous updates seem to have taken a good week to get through CERT in some situations, so my guess would be we'd maybe see this a week on Monday. As for what the patch contains, the update is going to be almost entirely focused on bug fixing, performance and stability rather than on new content. I know a ton of people want to see new monuments added, they want to see community servers, they want to see the tech tree added, but this update is not going to give you any of that. So before I jump into too much opinion on all of this, let's just run through the details of what's in the patch real quick. Firstly, they list several crash fixes, including one caused by plugging or unplugging in your headset on Xbox, which has been a pretty common one I've heard about, as well as crashes relating to the UI, and also crashing on game load. The next section goes on to list a bunch of bug fixes, including a fix for an exploit that a lot of players were using that allowed you to access the launch site monument without needing the key cards. I'm sure plenty of you know what I'm talking about there. It also fixes bugs allowing players to build too close to safe zones, issues with the profanity filter, issues preventing players from planting pumpkins and corn in planters, and players rubber banding due to chairs. Pumpkins and corn turn out to be quite a major theme of this patch, which we will jump more into in a minute. As well as those, it also mentions a fix for a glitch where sitting in chairs in the bandit camp would make you invisible, and a fix for the internet connection not detected error message. There's some useful stuff in there, but nothing too surprising with the launch site glitch being the biggest thing there in my opinion. Players will now have to follow the usual path of acquiring the correct key cards to be able to continue running launch rather than just cheesing it through a window. After the bug fixes come some quality of life and performance improvements which do offer a few more interesting changes in gameplay. The first and most interesting one is that workbenches can now be picked up by using a hammer similar to chests and furnaces. This is similar to how it works on PC and will mean as long as you have TC access or if there is no TC, then you can pick up a workbench. This is really handy because as well as it making it easier to remove badly placed or redundant workbenches in your own bases, it also means you can scavenge free ones from other people's bases or decayed or raided bases as long as you are not building blocked. We've all seen random cracked open bases sitting around with a workbench there that you'd love to have and now you will be able to have it. Of course, they will be more hotly contested, so don't expect to see quite so many sitting around unused. Changes have also been made to increase the distance between planting pumpkins and corn to help reduce server lag and improve performance, as well as planting being disabled 
assembled near monuments and a food dropping less seeds. So fingers crossed this nerf of mass planting of vegetables will have some positive effect on server performance. Certainly spamming thousands of pumpkins and corn all over the map can't be doing any favors for the game, so it seems like a pretty sensible change. Outside of horticulture, they have also fixed an issue with Xbox controllers not being reacquired after disconnecting, an issue causing the player list to go invisible, an issue with Xbox percentages for achievements, and problems with the Xbox invite system. The last interesting one here that I skipped over is that sleeping players will now be killed when sleeping too long in safe zones. Currently, the behavior has been that sleeping players would stay alive indefinitely inside safe zones until they logged back in, whereas now they will be cleared out by the guards once they have slept past a short timer. This hopefully should reduce the amount of sleepers you'll see knocking around in Bandit Camp and Outpost. Lastly, they list two changes right at the bottom, one that makes the player model visible in your inventory screen again, as you currently only saw it when you have motion blur enabled. And they've also updated the icons for bandages, the large med kit, and med syringes. So that's all we can expect to see with update 1.04, and whilst containing some good fixes and gameplay tweaks, I know it will definitely fall short of what a lot of players had been hoping for. Personally, I have had seen it mentioned on the Rust console Discord that 1.04 was going to focus on performance and bug fixing rather than new content. So I had braced myself for this somewhat, but I know most players probably didn't have that information. I do feel that performance and stability and bug fixing should take priority over adding in new content to some degree. There will always be performance improvements that can be made in a game and there will always be bugs in a game. But if the devs feel like those are so significant that they need to be resolved first due to their impact on players, then I think that prioritization is the right decision. But the thing that makes it frustrating is kind of like what Serial said in his video that these fixes in 1.04 feel like the kind of thing you would have hoped to see in a day one or a week one patch, emergency performance and stability hot fixes for the game. It's not the kind of thing we wanted to see two months into the game's release with pretty much no significant content released so far. It's hard to know what else is being worked on in the background content wise, if anything, but this slow progress doesn't fill me with confidence that we will see any interesting new content anytime soon. I really hope there are separate teams working on some interesting stuff behind the scenes, but unfortunately, you just never really know until these things go live. Development for Rust on console does seem to be moving very slowly, and whilst I think they are prioritizing the right things first in this situation, I wish they were able to progress with them much more quickly. I don't know why it's taken so long for these bug fixes and tweaks to happen, but this is where we are. There has been a mention on the Discord that the skin store and then electricity and the tech tree are some of the first content updates they're looking at. So given the current pace of updates for Rust console, it could well be many months until we see any sign of community servers, new monuments, or bigger maps. Those are some of the things that I know would create a lot of new hype and enjoyment for players, and I worry about the long-term effect these slow updates will have on the player base base for Rust console. My prediction is that we'll see the player population continue to decline and stagnate until we get a significant content update that brings community servers or new monuments. I talk at length about why I think community servers are one of the most important things for Double Eleven to give us in a video that I put up last week, so if you haven't seen that already, I'll put a link up in the corner for you. I really hope that 1.04 gets the bulk of the critical fixes done that Double Eleven needed to do and allows them to now have a plan platform on which they can begin to grow and improve the game and put smiles on players' faces. Rust on PC is well known for its regular interesting content updates, and whilst hoping for monthly content from Rust console now seems extremely optimistic, we can at least hope that we are now stepping onto a better road for the rest of the year. So that's really it for today. I wish there was a bit more to talk about or show you, but I can only work 
with the material that's in front of me. I do have lots more content planned for Rust console, but a lot of it I am putting on hold until we have some fresh content in the game to push the player experience to the next level. So I hope you found that video interesting. If you're still watching now, then you're probably not completely sick of me. So why not hit the like button to help us out and drop a sub to the channel so you can stay up to date with all things Rust console. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Ben, we are the Beard Guys, and I'll see you next time.